Hello everyone, I'm Mike. In this video, we're going to be doing something very simple. I'm going to be going to my favorite stages in this game. Uh, courses, stages, whatever you want to call them. Not areas, we're going to do that in a different video. But I'm going to be going to my favorite, yeah, my favorite courses. The reason why they're my favorites, well, I'm going to explain why I like them, and the origins, the history of them, and what makes them so good, etc, etc. And without further ado, let's just get straight into it. Oh, uh, yeah, while we go to the first stage, uh, I am going to be doing a worst stages as well, like my least favorite stages. It is, it is in, um... It is a replacement for the top 10 best and top 10 worst. I just like this, um, I like this format a lot more. Anyways, enough of me talking about, you know, videos and such. This is the Eel Graveyard. And it has recently been changed. The only change is the sign right here. Which, uh, is found in a lot of stages now. Where it says, warning, if you're prone to seizures, there's a chance you may encounter an unfinished area when testing. If you see any areas with an experimental logo or Mario icon with an exclamation point, please exit level if you are at risk and immediately report to the head of QA. Thank you for your cooperation. Uh, now, you might think, if you've uh, if you've been in Eel Graveyard before, that this sign is, is uh, sounds a bit out of place. Like, why is this here? Well, let me let me show you. If you go over to this eel, this specific golden eel right here, and you stand on where the star is, well, the textures start warping. I will say though, it's not that bad in this stage because the stage is dimly lit, so it's not too bad. Anyways, if you jump, it will uh, reveal a star outside the map. But anyways, talking about this area, I really like the aesthetic of this area when you disregard what abomination I just made with the uh, with the texture shifting. I like the openness of it and I just like the uncanniness of all the eels, the dead eels uh, around and I think there's a shark that is uh, flying around over there. And it's like it's a very cozy and chill stage otherwise but it is a little bit uncanny but I just like I like the vibe that this stage gives off which is why I put it on this list. For the next stage, we are going outside again. And I am hopefully not hitting that invisible wall that I did last time I tried to record this video. I, I did that in the nighttime version though. I hit like a, an invisible wall that I had never hit before. So we're going to Silent Hall and straight through the door, which leads us to this ominous painting and you notice at the bottom left that i am safe stating that is because there are two different areas that you can get to the first area is vanish cap under the moat beta or uncanny moat whatever which is not the area that we want to go to we want to go to the 0.7 stage which there is, in my testing, around a 10% chance to get to when you are not in Act 1 and around a 20% chance when you are in Act 1. Don't, don't, don't quote me on that. I, I don't know. Sometimes it feels like 5% as well. But we're going to be jumping inside this painting for a little bit until something happens. Let's do a little side flip dive into this hat right there. And we have arrived. We have some relaxing, let's go down the wine river playing in the background. Not the only place that has uh, this particular soundtrack. There's a different there's a different version of it in another area, greenhouse framework. But this one is much more relaxing and cozy. Now why is this stage one of my favorites? I like the aesthetic of this stage. I like the uniqueness of this stage. It's it's very plain and simple, but I just I just like the aesthetic of it mixed with the music. The sort of warm, the sort of warm wooden colors and the bricks. Which are the same bricks that are found in Eternal Fort Beta, I believe. 
and this nice grassy area. I just really like this area. It's There's not really much to say. I mean, this is a very subjective video, so if I start rambling a lot about certain stages like this one, it's because some of the, some of the areas, I don't really have a detailed explanation as to why I like them. There's just something about these stages in terms of their aesthetics that just makes me happy, you know? And this stage is just a stage that puts a smile on your face when you go here. Very fantastic area. Now for the next area, we are going to be going to... By the way, the, the previous two stages, including that one, are original creations. They are not Greenio or Waste of Blood references, but the next stage that we are going to... We're in Beta Lobby C, by the way. The next stage that we are going to is going to be a Greenio reference. So we are on the fourth floor here. We head to the pipe on the right that takes us to... Bowser's Domain, which since 0 0.9 has had a little bit of a, it's a little bit darker than before. Um, but you want to head all the way down here, all the way down here. And what you'll also notice if you played 0 0.9, you'll notice that the pipe has been moved over there instead. But we're going through this door here, which leads us to the challenge lobby without any music playing that is completely normal. That no music plays when you go through there. Now, if you head through the door in the th with a three on it, you are greeted to this amazing looking, um, I guess, area where the painting is. This, this little hub area looks really pretty. You jump in and you get put in tall, tall treetops. This is one of the most beautiful stages in the game. It is a reference to Greenio's epilogue video, if I am not wrong. It is the epilogue video. And 1.0 did a little change to the stage. It could also have been the uh, the hotfix, but this bob up here, that used to be, you used to be able to talk to him. He now just blows up like some of the other bob -ums. There's a lot of these fake out bob where you're like, I want to go talk to it. And then it just blows up. But uh, yeah, aesthetically beautiful stage. Incredibly fun to play. This is one of my favorite stages in terms of platforming. It just feels amazing to play. The music is obviously sensational. A um, Beware the Forest Mushrooms remix. So that was the third stage. Now the next stage that we are going to is going to be rather interesting. Rather, rather interesting. So we are heading up again. And we are heading to Creepy Cove. Now, Creepy Cove is not the stage I'm talking about. The stage is nice. I like the stage. It's, uh, the music is obviously amazing. Although I will say, I don't associate the music with this stage. Uh, that stage we're going to be going to a little bit later. You, you know which stage it is. It's one of my favorites. It's been one of my favorites since uh, I got introduced to this game. However, the stage that we are going to is Jolly Roger Coastline. Which has a music modification that makes the music pitched up a little bit and play a little bit slower. But we have this area, which is another Greenio reference, by the way. Yet another Greenio reference. With the lighthouse, you have the star on top. This area just looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, you have this white skybox as well. Which, um, I think this makes the, the area just looks amazing. It reminds me, it reminds me of, um, it reminds me of some of the, um, the trips that I've been on with like the cliffs and stuff on the coastline and everything. It's, th this area is aesthetically pleasing. I love the music, the slower playing music. 
And honestly, getting the two stars here is pretty satisfying. It's a satisfying stage to play. Paired with the um, paired with the way you enter it, uh, the way you go up the water and then you discover this beautiful area. I just love it. I just love it. The way the stage has been handled by Chris has been amazing. So this is Jolly Roger Coastline. Now, that was the stage where the, st the uh, music plays slower than normal. Now let's head to a stage that you might be familiar with from one of my earlier videos. Uh, not the lobby I want to be in. But we want to be in Beta Lobby C again, with 3 and 3 on the doors on the left. And we want to head to Bowser's Domain yet again. But this time we are going a different way. You know what's funny about this area, by the way? There is actually no door there. There's just it's just some one-way polygonal uh, polygons. Polygonal polygons, that's a new word. Anyways, you want to head to this little um this little door under the purple area. You want to follow this area right here. And I'm going to sort of retrain what I did in my castle bathroom video, which is straight, straight, straight. Don't stray from the straight. Just keep going straight, keep going straight. And the moment you can't go straight anymore, you take a left turn. And you take a right turn immediately and keep going straight. We have a door over there as well. I don't actually remember where that door takes you. I think it takes you to the Nebula Lobby. But anyways, we are in the fabled castle bathroom. Ah, uh, it's good to be back here. Now, we head to the right here. And head to this stage. This is not the stage I'm talking about, by the way. I think the stage is nice. This is bob -um Battle, er, bob -um River Beta, sorry. bob -um River Beta. But this is not the stage that I'm referring to. We are, once again... Going to be going to a stage that is located within a stage. So a stage within a stage. We're going to shoot ourselves up in the air here. By the way, another Greenio reference. I know, I say it a lot, but I want to, you know, I just want to acknowledge it. I want to acknowledge, you know, who... Who... The areas are from. We go through here, and we get put in this awesome area. bob -um Cavern. With this fast-paced, lo-fi version of... Well, technically it's not lo-fi since it's faster than normal. But this fast-paced version of the Dire Dire Ducks theme. So why do I like this area? I like this area because it looks absolutely amazing. The music is absolutely amazing. And just the way you get there, you know? You take a long journey to a stage that looks familiar. You go into this pipe, and then you get put in this area with music that plays nowhere else. It, there's nowhere else in this game where the music plays like this. You go to the end, and you see on top of this platform this fabled yellow switch, only to realize that it's not real, and it's just a decoy. Obviously a reference to the fact that this stage got, uh, or I guess the video, the video is an outtake. The reference of that video is an outtake. Anyways, speaking of the Nebula Lobby that I mentioned earlier, that is the next area that we are going to. And... Instead of, instead of just going through Beta Lobby C 30 times, I was thinking, why don't we go through a different path? So, we go up to Beta Lobby B. Yet again, we're gonna go here a couple of times, because a lot of the stages are located this way. And... We head to the Depressed Royal Lobby again. And we head all the way up, which takes us to Bowser's Castle. 
Now from Bowser's castle, this Goomba will... I... never mind, never mind that Goomba actually. Now Bowser's castle... You want to head through the key door here. And once you're in this area, which is obviously, it's the fourth floor... The I iceberg reference. You want to head through the door right here. And then head through this door, which takes you to... The Nebula Lobby, right in front of one of the bosses that will reward you a red star. Yeah, spoiler alert, by the way. Now, we head through here, and we are now in another challenge lobby looking area. But this is not the area that is interesting here. No, the area that is interesting is found... If we go into the water, and we want to head to the left over here, and go up until we get to this area. This stage is called Idyllic Islands, or Dire Bubble. You can, you can use either. Some, some people call it Idyllic Islands, some people call it Dire Bubble. Now, Dire Bubble is a water-themed version of Fire Bubble, the Lethal Lava Land beta stage. And fun fact, this area here had a problem with crashing because of a 1-up that was located inside of this uh, clam. But that 1-up is gone. And you know what's a fun fact about this stage, by the way? This is the stage in the game with the second most stars, only beaten by Moto's Factory. This area has six stars. You have a star right there. You have the silver stars. You have the star under the, um... Under the, um... Thingy? The grate? You have... A Goomba that you can rescue, and then I think you have one more somewhere that I don't remember. I think I think I'm correct. I'm pretty sure this is the stage I'm thinking of. That has like six stars. But uh I like the aesthetic of this. I love the music by the way, which is a Remix that is very close to Ruins in the Blood Lake, if you know that, if you've uh, seen Kaizo's videos. And this one is actually a mix between Dire Dire Ducks, the lobby, you know, the lobby, and Lethal Lava Land. You can kind of hear the melody playing in the background, it's that weird melody that you hear. But, this is Dire Bubble. I think Dire Bubble is an absolutely beautiful stage, and absolutely adore the stage. Now the next area that we're going to, we obviously have a couple more areas, since there are pretty much 10 or 11 areas that I'm going to be showing. So the next area that I'm going to be showing is done through Beta Lobby B again, and we're gonna head down- well, it doesn't have to be through Beta Lobby B, but we're gonna go there. Now, once you head through here, you get put in the Plexa Lobby, and you want to head all the way up to the door right here. And, th and this is gonna be a shocker. This is gonna be a shocker to a lot of people, by the way. A an absolute shocker, right? Absolute shocker. A snow stage is on my top 10 list? I know, right? Welcome to Chroma Tundra. Found within the Genesis basement. I love this stage a lot. The music made by Waste of Blood. It's a Waste of Blood reference. And a conspiracy reference. SM64 conspiracy reference. There is something about this specific snow level, like the way you navigate it, except that snowman there, he can fuck right off. Something about navigating this area is pleasant, with the music that's playing in the background. You have a- you have a couple of 
quite unique stars here as well. For example... Uh, you have a star over there on that island. That island is actually a very fun... It's a fun reference to... I believe it's a reference to Symbol Flips when he looked at chat when he tried to get to that island. It was a fun reference, and now there's actually something over there. You have a uh, you have a box, a star right here that's within an ice block or something. It's not rendering because I'm not close enough. You have the red coin star, and then you have a star all the way at the top. So four stars to get here. I think all of them are a lot of fun to get. So that is Chroma Tundra. Now the next stage that I am going to be going to, I'm kind of just freestyling here. I'm not taking them in any particular order. I'm just doing them as I please. The next stage that we are going to is located in the Plexal upstairs. So we are going to Bay Lobby B with one and two on the doors. Head upstairs. Now this, now this, if, if I made a top 10 list and I was like, what, 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 um, where would this particular stage place in my top 10? This stage is number two on my list. This is Dry Town. I was here the last video, the one with the sequences, where we went from Wet Dry World Beta to Dry Town. Now what is Dry Town? It is, first and foremost, it's an original creation with a little bit of inspiration from another area that is also found in this game called Flooded Downtown with very similar, very similar design choices with the pillars right here and the entrance and these towers, I think, right here, the buildings right here, those buildings, the buildings right there, this contraption that I'm walking up. Now, what makes Dry Town so special? Well, first and foremost, we have the lore. We have the mysteries of wet and dry, and where does the solution lie? Blah, blah, blah. I mentioned this last time. You have the ominous Baba message within the uh, the Rainbow Ride House. The Baba right here that uh, is relaxing by the fire. Before I flood this world. Very, very ominous message. Uh, probably my favorite dialogue in the whole game, to be honest. That particular dialogue. And then there's another dialogue change that happened between 0 0.7 and 0 0.9. The villagers do not like being bothered. Please stay quiet near the doors. I love this dialogue change. Because the old one, the old one was something about, something about a secret near the doors. There are secrets in these doors. This one scolds you if you try to pursue touching the doors, you know, and disturbing the villagers. Anyways, I'm getting I'm getting a sidetrack. Obviously, this is one of the stages where Mario and Luigi they commit a crime. That was actually a video idea that was suggested to me, but I feel like I feel like that video wouldn't be very long because there aren't that many areas where Mario and Luigi do commit crimes. But most of them are in this video anyway, so I guess I guess wish has been granted kind of. And yeah, but I I showed this last time where when you go into that pipe you uh flood the whole world and all the inhabitants they die. They're all dead now. Well, they're not dead yet. They probably still have oxygen in their lungs. They're they're dead soon. Let's get out of here before they die. <laughs> and let's go to the next area. So, once again, Beta Lobby B. So, one and two on the doors. I'm on a low star save file, so I have to do that dialogue all the time. One and two on the doors. We're going up through the double door to the Plexal upstairs again. Now this stage, where would I place this stage that I'm about to go to? This stage is actually number one on my list. This is my 
favorite stage in this entire game. No questions. It is downtown city. The music, the aesthetics, the way the stage plays, and then it has one of the most unique features that I honestly, I wish this idea was explored upon further in B3313, where you have what I would call dynamic dialogue. So this bob will warn you and say something about a shadow inside the temple, don't enter because otherwise you will drown all the villagers like you've done the past 55 times. And of course we're gonna ignore and go in, right? But then what is unique about this area is that his dialogue changes. And we get scolded. We get directly scolded after we do it. We don't get directly scolded when we do the dry town thing. But here, I see what they meant about monsters of red and green now. Just leave. And then you have this ominous uh, poem over here. Where their cries silence under the vast sound of tuning out waves. Crashing overhead, cleansing all in their wake like gods without compass, taking them with a flood. Lest we forget where the devils soundly sleep and the forgotten gently weep. You obviously have the howling. And the, just, just the aesthetic of this area. Both before you flood the area and after you flood the area. The music, which is... I, I'm kind of repeating myself, but yeah, the music is absolutely amazing in this area. It's not my favorite music of all time. Uh, that will be the next area that we're going to that has my favorite music. But this is my favorite stage in the game. I love the, sta the stars that you're getting here and the way you play the stage, the way it looks. I'm rambling too much, so let's go to the next stage. The next stage is found in floor 2B. And actually it's two stages, but we're going to we're going to do one of them. We're going to do one of them that I think has a slight edge over the other because of how it looks, because of the visuals. Well, actually no, I think they're tied because one of them has one of them has dialogue that I really like. The other one has visuals that I really like. I think the visuals are beautiful in both of them, but I think one of them just slightly beats the others. But anyways, we're in the Crescent Castle, and we just want to head straight, head straight, head straight, head straight. Do not stop heading straight. Through the door. Through the door inside the... Cloud painting here. And up the stairs. We are in fake lobby, by the way. This is not the real vanilla lobby. We're in fake lobby. So now we're in floor 2B. Now, both of the stages are within floor 2B. And we're talking about Wiggler's Fortress and Midnight Meadows. We're going to head through Wiggler's Fortress because, one, the video is already 30 minutes long. And I'm about to end the video. And two, <laughs> it's closer. It's closer. So what you'll notice straight away is that this area. So you have this. You have this like weird haze. A sad-looking area. You have a ruin. Now, obviously, the music in the background. This music's called Dire Dire Loss, which is a little bit low volume. I have, uh, I have talked to Chris about the low volume. I don't know if that is getting changed. I don't think it will. It's not a massive issue. I just wish it was a bit louder to match the other stages in the game. But one of, my, one of the key features of this stage that I love is the music being my favorite music in the whole game. The visuals, once again, with the the nature and the sort of desolate ruins. 
And then navigating this stage is a joy as well. The red coin stage is fun. It's nice to explore the area. And then you have the wicker boss fight at the top as well. Which you get by going up here. You can also wall jump up there. But you have this wiggler up here that has lost its limbs. I know why it's lost its limbs. Because of a bug. <laughs> There's a bug that, um... A bug that caused the, uh limbs to not act normally so i think chris just removed the limbs but anyways that was actually the whole video i don't know if there were any areas that i um wanted to go to that i didn't go to if 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 that's the case then i'll be making another video and i'll show you how to get to those areas too but uh these were my favorite courses i know i know that i was rambling a little bit more than usual in this video because it is it is more of a subjective video uh, rather than the sequence video which is a lot more objective where i just explain what's going on i have to you know <laughs> i have to i have to argue as to why these are my favorite stages but i hope you enjoy the video regardless and i hope you um i hope you check out the areas and let me know what you think about these areas that I've picked. Let me know if there are any areas that you think are your favorites. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.